Jim, why don't we start with you? You know, this mission has so many important steps, but if there's one factor that you believe is the most critical, what would that be? So this is really the first end-to-end -end test of the Starliner. So we're talking about launch, we're talking about docking with the International Space Station, undocking, re-entry, landing. Um, it's, it's hard to nail down specifically what is the most important thing that we're testing. This is the entire system end-to-end. -end. It's uncrewed, but we're, what we're doing is we're going to gather data and information so that we can, we can make good decisions moving forward as we get ready to launch our heroes, the American astronauts. And Sonny, you will be on this spacecraft in the future. What will you be watching for? Oh, just like Jim said, uh, you know, successful launch and docking to the space station and returning um, and just making sure that uh, it comes back in, in good shape because uh, the turnaround is going to be quick and, and ready to go and uh, we'll be hopefully launching in at me and uh, Josh by the end of the year. Uh, Jim, right now, you know, we rely on Russians to get our astronauts to the International Space Station. How will this program, first off, improve our capability to get there and then secondly, the cost that currently comes with that? So this is important. Uh, as you mentioned, we have not launched American astronauts on American rockets from American soil since the retirement of the space shuttles in 2011. Uh, that is a stain, quite frankly, on the United States of America. We need to get back to flying humans again, and that's what this represents. Now this time when we do it, though, we're doing it different than we've done it before. We're not going to own and operate the rockets or the crew capsules. We're buying a service. NASA wants to be one customer of many customers in a robust commercial marketplace, and we want to have numerous providers that are competing against each other on cost and innovation. The goal is to have more access to space than ever before. And so that's really what this commercial crew program is all about, and we're very excited about it. Sonny, what's the training been like for you? Are there big differences between you know, this spacecraft and the Soyuz? Absolutely. I know I had the luxury of flying on a, a shuttle initially as a young astronaut, then a Soyuz, and now Starliner. Both of those programs were well established, and being part of a flight test program, a, a new program, we're helping to establish all that, as well as working with the engineers, you know, the thousands of people for, from both ULA and Boeing who have, are putting this rocket and the spacecraft together. So we're learning along the way with them. You know, it's a new innovative spacecraft and rocket has, that has a lot more automation than I've seen in the past. And so that situational awareness of how the operator interacts with that vehicle is something brand new. And like I said, the training program is brand new and we're, we're getting into it um, and learning a whole lot for the next generation of space explorers. And Jim, as you know, the Space Coast has seen its ups and downs, but I can tell you folks here are excited about the future. What kind of effects will the commercial crew program I mean, it's already having an effect on Brevard County, but in the future as well. Mm -hmm. So NASA has more under development right now than we've ever had, quite frankly, in our history. So we've got two separate commercial crew providers. Of course, we've got commercial resupply happening at the same time, which is resupplying the International Space Station. And now we're building the most powerful rocket ever built, the SLS rocket, which is going to take our astronauts, in fact, the first woman and the next man, to the moon. Uh, so NASA is, is ex exceedingly excited right now. And I will also say um, that I, I know, I, I was living here um, when there was a day when people announced that the shuttles were retiring. And I know the layoffs and the hard time that was had here in Central Florida, especially the Space Coast. But, but, but I'm telling you, those days are in the past. Bob Cabana, the center director here, um, has done an amazing job bringing in a lot of these commercial partnerships. Um, but know this, our budgets at NASA are going up. We haven't had this in decades. They're going up fast. Uh, the president's budget requests are, 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 are making NASA healthier, and we're getting bipartisan support in the House and in the Senate. So look, we want to see Central Florida be very healthy. Um, that's underway right now, and there's just a lot of really exciting things happening here. Quickly, last thing, as we near the finish line, Sonny, talk about the emotions you're feeling. Oh, it's, it's amazing. I could feel the launch fever even last night as, uh, you know, the team from, uh, from Johnson Space Center in Texas started coming to Florida, and more and more people are coming to Florida. You know, my mom lives on the west coast of Florida. She's psyched to see it, you know, from there because, you know, we'll be able to see the, a rocket go up across the peninsula. So I think all of Florida is going to get a little bit busier in the next 24 hours as people come down here getting ready to watch this rocket. I'm, I'm just psyched.